Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review and today we're checking out a brand new energy weapon pack known as the Heavy Energy Weapon Combo Pack by Pig. This is going to add two brand new heavy energy weapons into the game, both of which are very makeshift and very, very cool. If any of you remember Pig's Tinker's Ray Gun mod, this is going to be very similar to that except covering heavy energy weapons. And in this pack we have the Tinkerer's Caster, which is going to be a makeshift version of the classic Plasma Caster. But we also have the Tinkerer's Tesla Cannon, so we have a brand new Tesla Cannon, but unlike anything we've seen in past Fallout games, so that's pretty cool. These weapons are going to be mostly NIF Bash, so there are some custom assets here and there, and they are going to utilize vanilla animations, but I gotta say, these both look very, very nice. Especially that Tinker's Tesla Cannon, that thing looks absolutely insane. I've seen it on the Discord a lot floating around, and I've just been waiting for its release, and we finally get to have our hands on it. When it comes to actually acquiring these things, the Plasma Caster is actually added to the level list and can be found on Gunners and Brotherhood of Steel members after level 16. However, the Tinkerer's Tesla Cannon is actually a unique weapon in this pack. It is one of a kind, and you're going to have to hunt it down over at Gunners Plaza. Specifically, you can find it down in the basement. Given that the Tesla Cannon is a unique weapon, it does not have a ton of customization over at the weapons workbench. However, the Plasma Caster does have enough to cover both of them, and it does have some very unique modifications that allow it to perform unlike anything in the vanilla game. I think that covers all of the basic details, so let's go ahead and hop in-game with each of these weapons, check out their stats, modifications, and every other little thing they have to offer. For starters, let's talk about stats, and we'll start with the Tinkerer's Caster here. And you'll notice that in its most basic version, with no modifications, this thing is actually pretty small and pretty compact, which is an interesting look for a heavy weapon, though you can modify this thing to be rather gigantic. This thing has a base ballistic damage of 55 and an additional energy damage of 55. It uses plasma cartridges, of course, has a fire rate of 11, a range of 119, an accuracy of 48, a weight of a whopping 19.5 pounds, as it is a heavy weapon, and a value of 137 caps. And I gotta say, I really do like the look of this thing. Using a modified flamer chassis with a bunch of plasma parts makes this thing look really, really cool. Now, as for the Tesla Cannon here, we have a really interesting design. I have to say, I absolutely love the look of this thing. It looks super Fallout and super cool. You can see a lot of the makeshift parts, including this little handle here, which I think goes on a pepper mill. I'm not sure what the vanilla asset is for that. Regardless, this thing has a base damage of 205 energy damage. It uses fusion cores as its ammunition and uses the vanilla missile launcher animation. So you just pop this open and slam a fusion core inside. It has a fire rate of 5, a range of 227, an accuracy of 17, a weight of 20.5 pounds, and a value of 3,075 caps, which is a bit high, but this is a unique weapon. So that's totally justifiable. I gotta say, I really like the color profile of this weapon as well. Lots of wood and browns mixed with tiny bits of yellow makes this thing very appealing to look at. Almost looks like something the Minutemen would use to fight the Brotherhood of Steel. Now, there isn't a ton going on in this mod in terms of custom animations. However, there are some neat custom sounds and some really cool unique projectiles that I did want to go ahead and show off, as I think they make this mod stand out from some of the other ones. Starting off with this Tesla cannon, this has a really cool sound effect that just makes it feel super beefy and powerful in your hands. I gotta say, I just really, really like firing this thing. Additionally, there is a new projectile in the form of a grenade launcher for the plasma caster. So yes, you can throw on a grenade modification, which is pretty crazy. Fire this thing and it does have quite a bit of an arc, so you gotta aim up and then it explodes on impact and looks really neat. Now then, when it comes to attachments for these weapons, we do have some cool stuff going on over at the weapons workbench, especially for that Tinkerer's caster, including the option to turn it into the classic style of plasma caster, at least as far as the barrel is concerned. We do have the ability to turn it into a full-on grenade launcher or even a minigun of sorts, which has a very terrifying profile. Starting with the Tinkerer's caster, let's check out the barrel options. We do have 
the short barrel, splitter, sniper, and automatic barrels, which all look just like their vanilla counterparts. However, much like their vanilla counterparts, there are improved versions of each of these barrels that offer some unique looks, including the improved short barrel, the improved splitter, which has a very unique barrel design based on the Gauss rifle suppressor. We have the improved sniper barrel, which adds that classic plasma caster look, the improved automatic barrel, which gives you that minigun look, the flamer barrel, which just turns this thing into a green flamer, and then the lobber, which is that grenade launcher modification, which heavily increases the damage on this thing, but also makes it so that you have to reload every time you shoot. So there is a little bit of a balancing act going on there. We have changes to the plasma tank, like the standard plasma tank, the large plasma tank, which adds a better ammo capacity, but reduces your reload speed, and then the superheated plasma tank, which will add some burning damage. And then for sights, we only have two options, the standard sights and the reflex sight. But I would heavily recommend throwing on that reflex sight, as the standard sights is basically no sight. There's nothing there, and it's almost impossible to aim. Now, for the Tinkerer's Tesla cannon, there's not a whole lot going on, but there is some stuff here. We just have a quote-unquote parts section, which is essentially your receiver. The standard parts is, well, standard. The anti-robot parts will give you bonus damage to robots. The high voltage parts will increase your damage from 205 to 325 and your range from 227 to 251. And then the anti-air parts are going to greatly increase your range and damage, bringing you to a total damage of 445 and a range of 371, making this thing perfect for taking down vertebrates up in the sky. All right, now then it is of course time for our damage test and we have quite a bit of tests to run today. We'll be using the basic version of the plasma caster here with no modifications and no perks, then a fully upgraded semi-auto version of the weapon, a fully upgraded full auto version of the weapon to see which is better in terms of performance, and then we'll also be checking out that grenade launcher variant. And then as for the Tesla cannon in this mod, I have a special test lined up for that later. But let's check out the Plasma Caster first. Now keep in mind that these Death Claws do have a bit of energy resistance, though this deals both kinetic and energy damage, so this should perform pretty well. Let's see how this thing does, aiming for the Death Claws weak point as best as we can with no sights. Let's check it out. And... Eight should do it. That might have been seven if my aim was better, but realistically, it's going to be hard to stay on target with this thing, especially when a death cloud's moving around in combat. So anywhere from seven to ten shots should be pretty promising, which means you won't need to reload with this weapon. Let's see how we do fully upgraded with the sniper barrel and some added burning damage. Now this thing has three in the magazine or fuel canister, whatever you need to call it, and I was worried we'd have to reload a bunch, but it turns out it only takes three shots to bring down a Deathclaw with this version of the weapon, so that's pretty neat. Let's see how we do in full auto. Gonna have to reload there. Now, obviously, this takes way more shots. However, you're going to dish them out much, much faster. In terms of time to kill, they're probably pretty similar, except we did have to reload in the middle there because I forgot to reload this weapon beforehand. So that's kind of my fault. Realistically, you shouldn't need to reload this thing when fighting a Deathclaw, so this is actually pretty nice. But let's check out the grenade launcher. You only get one shot before you have to reload, so I hope this thing kills the Deathclaw. Sadly... It did not, but wow, that did pack in some pretty good damage. Two to take down the Deathclaw, but imagine if you were fighting, say, a group of raiders, you'd probably be able to kill them all in just one shot. So this thing is definitely better versus groups of weaker enemies. Now then, as promised, I did want to do something special for the Tesla Cannon. As fully upgraded, this thing spits out some crazy damage, which is why we're going to be testing this thing on Liberty Prime. Pretty substantial target, but I have a feeling... This thing might be able to hold its own. Let's see how it does. And as you can see, 
it definitely can. This thing packs quite a punch. Four shots to take down Liberty Prime with the fully upgraded receiver. Now, this is a unique weapon, and it is pretty powerful, but it does consume fusion cores. So, in terms of balance, it's pretty balanced. The only thing that's a bit odd is that this is able to shoot 50 times before you need to reload. Uh, but that's just kind of a weird thing with fusion cores. It's hard to make them work as intended, but still pretty cool weapon. So yeah, guys, that is the heavy energy weapon combo pack by Pig. A lot of fun in this mod. These are really, really cool weapons, and they're just really fun to use. And I like the aesthetics of them quite a bit. If you want to try this mod out, it will be linked down in the description below, along with the Xbox link, as this one is available not only for PC, but Xbox as well. So be sure to go out and try this mod for yourself and see if it fits in your load order. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video. If you want to try Patreon to support the channel, it will be linked down in the description below, but it is completely optional. A very special thank you to all of my tier 3 patrons, Astro, Captain Chaos, Helljumper, Indecisive Wolf, Jackie Noid, Kushi, Moonlit Gamer, Feed, and Youth RC. You guys are awesome. With that, thanks again for watching guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!